We would like to acknowledge the Yuggera people and the Turbul people as the traditional custodians of Mianjin, the lands on which we record this podcast today. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Always was, always will be, Aboriginal land. Hello and welcome to another episode of For the Health of It podcast, a podcast made for healthcare professionals by a nurse on the inside. So my name is Jess Tully and I'm your podcast host today, but I'm also the brand ambassador of Healthcare Australia and a registered nurse myself for over 10 years. So this episode is something that gets me super, super pumped up and I've titled it for a reason. I've titled it Bucket List Your Way with HCA because I honestly believe you can tick off so many bucket list items uh, with HCA. You know, there are so many possibilities and I'm going to talk about the possibilities during this episode, but it is something that gets me so fired up and excited. So I've just come back from contract um, and I got to do some incredible experiences and I've been wanting to do this episode for so long. So now's the time. Now's the time to just dive right into it. So we're talking about bucket lists. Something happened to me, you know, five, six years ago, had a terrible breakup and I just kind of reassessed my life. And I feel like so many people go through this same kind of scenario, whether it's a breakup, you've split with somebody or you've had some kind of life shake and you just don't know what to do next. Okay. And the best way to focus on yourself is to actually sit there and write a bucket list. And I'm talking a bucket list of like a hundred items and It can be so easy to write a bucket list down and write like say 15, 20 things. But then what happens is you pause and you actually have no idea what to write. So you'll write all the generic things, you know, like skydiving, um, going on a cruise, uh, you know, all those generic things that people always put on their bucket list. But then what happens is once you've written 15 to 20 of those generic ones, you actually sit there and go, oh my goodness, what? actually do I want to do with myself like what goals do I want to achieve and what things do I desire to do within my life uh I committed to this really hardcore about six years ago and I spent about three and a half weeks devoted to just writing out my bucket list and figuring out what it is that I wanted to do in this world what it is that I wanted to achieve and I completed well I didn't complete sorry I wrote down 92 items so the reason I was inspired to do this, and I oh, I encourage everyone to read this book. It's called 100 Things, What's on Your List? And it's by a guy named Sebastian Terry. So I was going through my pickle in life and my friends recommended this book and they knew that I was just going to jump on the bandwagon and do exactly what Sebastian Terry did. So he actually devoted his entire life around his bucket list item. Like he literally... He had a best friend who died quite young and he thought to himself, you know, his friend lived such an amazing life and did everything that he desired. And yes, he passed away young, but he feels like he would have no regrets. But he looked back on his life and was like, I will have regrets. If I was to die early, I would have so many regrets because I have not done any of the things I want to do. So he wrote out his bucket list and he just, he created his entire life to follow his bucket list journey. Um, And that's how he became so popular. And his book is honestly amazing. So if you want a little bit of um, inspiration by our book, I would definitely buy this one. But I read this book, I got inspired, and then I decided to write my bucket list. And what I did is I decided to, well, one of my bucket list items was to do a rural remote contract. And I was already with HCA before because I used to be an AIN with HCA. And then I used to do some casual shifts. And I just felt just really bored in my workplace I'd had this big life challenge that had happened and there was just no progression in my current workspace. I was doing the same thing over and over and I desired more. So my first one was dual rural remote contract. So I signed up to the R&R team with Healthcare Australia and I had a chat to them and the minimum, like minimum placement requirement is usually six weeks. You know, six weeks is the really happy number because you get your travel to and from your home airport. So I was in Perth WA at the time and I signed a contract to New South Wales Griffiths. So to me, six weeks was good, um, but I wanted to actually go for longer because I wanted to really dive into this. 
So I spoke to my workplace. I ended up resigning um, and they were really supportive of it, but I resigned and I took a three month contract and three months was so good for a very first contract. I feel like six weeks, by the, by four weeks, you're just starting to get into a routine. You're just starting to really know your colleagues and start, you know, I don't know, just having fun and just really enjoying the process. Cause the first few weeks, you know, you're learning so much. So when you do a six week it just goes so quick. So I was really, really happy that I did the 12 weeks. Now going into this contract opened my eyes and I became so obsessed with ticking off bucket list items that all my friends around me, all the people that I met during my contracts would help me tick off my list. So things like getting a tattoo, getting my first tattoo, um, like just honestly so many. My list is massive. So I devoted my life to this list and in 18 months I completed 20 of those items and it just made me so happy and so thriving on life and I still do to this day. Like I still do to this day. So I'm a huge lover of being able to create and design such an amazing life and HCA has your back. I have been able to do so much with this company, which is why I'm such a team purple lover. It is why I am the brand ambassador of this company because I am so passionate about what it is you want. So, you know, whether you have a family and you want to do agency work to, I don't know, get more income for holidays or to purchase a house, or maybe you don't want to be a stay-at-home mom and you actually just want to talk to some adults and get back into your nursing and actually just do something for yourself. The personal growth as well as the career growth that happens when you do agency, whether it's a metro day-to-day shift, just doing, you know, one shift a fortnight or something, or whether you dive in and do full-time or an R&R rural remote contract, the amount of personal growth that you get when you do these contracts is unbelievable. Every single person I meet, every single person I speak to that has done this tells me this exact thing. So if you're on the fence about, I don't know, doing agency or, you know, there's obviously a reason you've clicked on this episode, right? So you clicked on this episode because you're interested or you've got something, you've got a little fire in the belly, you want a bit of purpose, you want a bit of adventure, whatever it is, HCA has something for you. Okay. So I'm going to mainly speak about the rural remote space, but obviously Metro is unbelievable as well because I've been able to do so much. So I'll bring it back to my journey because if I bring it back to my journey, you can kind of see what happened to me and what can then happen for you. So I dived into my very first contract. I was in Griffith, New South Wales. It is such a beautiful spot to do a contract. It's a regional placement. And I just met the most incredible people and I started ticking off my bucket list items and I just started to honestly thrive and just be so absolutely happy because I was so proud of myself because getting out of your comfort zone is the scariest thing to do ever. It is so scary. And to jump on a plane and leave your home and go somewhere for three months where you don't know a single soul, you don't have a single friend, you are in a brand new workspace, it is terrifying. But when you look back at the end of that contract, you go, oh my God, I have grown so much and you will never go back home the same person again. I guarantee that. So the way I like to teach people, and I usually teach this to internationals because internationals come to Australia because they want to experience Australia and they don't want to sit still. They don't want to just stay in Sydney or stay in Brisbane or stay in Perth. They want to be there for like three to six months and then they want to go to the next spot because they want to experience whether they only have two years or not. They want to experience as much as they can within that visa period. So they're super fun to talk to because they are so excited and I basically acted like I was on a working holiday visa for five years but I'm not I'm just a typical Australian who just like had this realization that HCA can give you so much opportunity so I'm going to teach you guys it so whether you're an international or whether you're an Australian or whatever this is for you so look at Australia okay write down start writing down your bucket list items write them down and I guarantee you you're going to hit 20 and you're going to get completely stuck you're going to be like what the hell do I want to do with myself what do I want to do with my life but really have a big think about it if you want to look at my list I'm happy to send you my personal list because I've got my own and I've ticked off so many and I'm so proud of it 
but really this is your thing. Okay. So make sure you really think about this. So start looking about, you know, things in Australia as well that you want to do, because obviously you can have some international um, goals and desires. If you want to go to Egypt or Iceland or Alaska or whatever, that's fine because the income you can make with Healthcare Australia is going to help you hit those international trips, those international things. But actually look up in Australia. So for example, um, I'm going to be going to the Northern Territory soon uh, to do a contract. And I purposely choose contract locations around things that I want to do. Okay. Because yes, I'm going for the work. I'm going for the experience. I'm going for, um, you know, the income and all that jazz. But also what am I getting out of this? You know, I want to also get an experience out of this. I don't just I'm not somebody who goes and does a contract for the coin. I know some people um, are very money obsessed and they go, you know, give me the coin, give me the coin. How much will I get paid? And that's kind of all they care about. And if that's your goals at the time, fair enough. But maybe this podcast episode isn't for you because this is about bucket listing your way across HCA. Okay. So I'm not money focused. I am personal experience focused. So I... You know, you're going to get great income regardless, by the way, like you're an agency worker, you're getting free accommodation most of the time, you're getting flights to and from your location. So to me, it's kind of a win-win, but I go for the experiences. So for example, I'm going to the Northern Territory and I'm looking at all the incredible things that I can do. And if you just look at the NT in itself, there are some incredible things that you can do. I've got a little list here. So for example, just Darwin. So you're most likely going to go into Darwin. You can stay for a day or two, whatever. Or maybe you're doing a contract in Darwin. There's this thing called the cage of death where you can go in and you can swim with crocodiles. It may not be your jam and that's totally fine, but I absolutely love that stuff. And that's been on my bucket list for years. And I got to go to Darwin, actually. I've already ticked that one off, thank God. But it was such a cool experience because going into an actual cage with crocs all around me, they are scary. They're humongous, but it was so, so fun. So other things in the Northern Territory, Kakadu National Park, absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. And short story, I mean, long story short, I um, I used to live in Jabiru, which is the tiny little community in Kakadu National Park when I was 12. So I actually lived in this Indigenous community. Um, and I was at school there and I used to work at the bakery and I was only there for about a year, but I know Kakadu very well because I actually lived there, which is quite crazy, but Kakadu National Park is phenomenal. It's beautiful. So you can tick that off your list. Now, Uluru, see Uluru and you can do the, um, field of lights. And that's just such an incredible experience. Like people spend thousands and thousands of dollars to go from their home and they fly to wherever, I think Alice Springs, and then going to Uluru and they do their tour and then they pay all this money for accommodation and whatnot. And then they go home and that's honestly thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. But do you know what you can do? You can go into a contract in Alice Springs. You can get paid to be there and you can on your days off, hire a car and go to Uluru and do the field of lights and do all those incredible things on your days off on your contract. You're still earning some sweet, sweet income. You're having amazing experiences. You're having career growth. But then you also, on the side, can do these things. So there's even this like five course dining experience that you can do at Uluru. It's like imagine dining under the stars and looking at Uluru. Like that is, that's just mind blowing to me. There's also Catherine. They've got these amazing hot springs. I've written down so many things, honestly. Um, and Litchfield National Park. Like if you, really focus on just that state, it can just blow your mind up. And trust me, it'll help with your bucket list journey of like what you actually desire to do. If you don't like going to national parks, absolutely don't write it. If that's not your jam, that is fine. But have a look and just figure it out. Like what is your personality type? What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? Because you can do it. Um, For example, if you want to do Queensland, there is so much to do in Queensland. You can do contracts everywhere. So whether you're skill set is medical surgical, whether you've got an emergency background, whether you're aged care, um, we have positions, like we have positions for you. And when you are applying for positions, you do have to be a little bit more open-minded and flexible. So if you have specific dates that you have to go and you have, you, it's very precise and you want to go to Alice Springs, for example, 
you might not get those dates. Okay, because it depends on the facility and what they need at the time. And also lots of nurses are being floated for that position. So if you're being a little bit picky in terms of like, oh, I only want this and I only want this, they're just going to choose the person who's the most flexible. So my biggest advice with doing agency is be flexible. And I understand there are things that out of our control we can't be flexible uh, and that's fine, but you just have to be a little bit more patient when you're organizing, you know, especially if you're doing like bucket list style uh, planning. So Queensland, for example, you've got, I've heard great things about so many contracts in Queensland and you can always reach out to me on Facebook. I've got a Jess Tully Facebook account. So T-U-L-L-Y is my last name and you can just flick me a message and I can respond to you and let you know. I've done agency nursing for so long. So even if I haven't been to a contract, there can be, you know, spots that I know have such a great reputation or really, really good um, supporting with agency nurses. So ask me and I'm happy to answer. But like, for example, Queensland, I've heard great things about Mosman. Um, I want to go so bad. It sounds like such an incredible place. They're so lovely towards agency staff. Um, you know, and going to places like this, you can also do like the Great Barrier Reef. Um, you can do the Wit Sundays. You can go to Brisbane and Gold Coast on your time off. Like you can just hire a car. If you don't have a car, you can just hire a car on your days off. Like you're already saving money because you're away. You know, you're earning some good income. You can do these incredible things. Um, I actually went skydiving in Ely Beach, which is incredible. They even co- have contracts in Proserpine. Like there are honestly contracts everywhere. And we do have a Healthcare Australia uh, interactive map. So if you, because what, what I found actually when I was applying for contracts is I would have a look and there's all these names that I've got no bloody idea where any of them is. Okay. So like even Proserpine, I know Proserpine is, you know, a popular area because it's near Ellie Beach but like you know some people might not know where on earth Proserpine is so we actually have an interactive map on Healthcare Australia and if you need the link just let me know but you click on this link and it opens it up so it's a similar kind of concept for like if you're looking at real estate houses and you're looking for rentals you can just look at the location and just look on the map and you can just click so it's the same concept and I think it's really really good because you can actually have a visual and you can go okay I really want to go to the Great Barrier Reef So what are the contracts that are going to be only a few hours from the Great Barrier Reef? So that way on my days off, I can do that. It is so easy. It is so, so easy. And you can do so many amazing things, honestly. Um, I even did the tip of Australia. Like I got to, I went to Thursday Island and did a contract. So to be able to, you know, go to the tip of Queensland to the Thursday Island, which is just beautiful, beautiful region. The Torres Strait is stunning. Okay. But you can also do... um, you can get a photo at the tip, you know, and I think it's called the Cake York tip. And it's just, it's mind blowing experiences. And I'm like, I'm doing this on my day off. Like, this is crazy to me. Um, another huge one is Tasmania. If you haven't been to Tasmania, you are missing out. As an Australian and doing these bucket lists all over Australia, I realize that every single state is so different to one another. Like, they are so different like WA is gorgeous absolutely stunning I'm from Perth um the beaches are absolutely mind-blowing but you know trying to get to places is a little bit difficult like from Perth to get anywhere up and down it's really really long drives but absolutely stunning location you can go to Rottnest Island you can do see the quokkas you can do all these amazing things but a little bit hard to get up and down okay but it's very beachy vibes then you got the NT which shocked me because when I went to Darwin, there was like palm trees and stuff everywhere. And I just visualized red dirt. I don't know. Just red dirt is just what I visualized for Darwin and the whole of the NT. But Darwin's like a built up city and it's beautiful. Uh, I wouldn't probably go on the water because it's crux and stuff, but absolutely stunning. Um, But then you've also got, yeah, in the middle of Australia where you do have Uluru and Alice Springs and stuff and it is, you know, red dirt. Then you've got um, South Australia. Now, South Australia is unbelievable like I want to spend so much more time in South Australia and I think especially internationals they just don't really care I guess about SA like they are really keen to go to Bondi and you know stay in Sydney and go to Gold Coast and do all those real big touristy things that Australia is known for but they forget about all these little hidden gems and South Australia to me is an absolute hidden gem and if you are an international and there are positions in Adelaide for example like don't put it to the side, like commit, do six months, do a year. Like it is a really nice spot to explore. So the Air Peninsula, 
um, incredible amount of seafood, beautiful beaches. The wine is incredible in South Australia as well. Um, I was swimming with sea lions and I actually did a contract and this is another bucket list item, right? I did a contract in South Australia in Port Lincoln and Port Lincoln is um, right along the coast. And the reason I chose that spot is because it's the only spot in the entire of Australia, okay, all of Australia that you can shark cage dive. And that's on my bucket list. Sharks terrify me. I am so scared of the ocean because of sharks. I will like, I barely go in. I go into my belly button because I'm that terrified. But going into a cage and actually seeing them face to face was just something that is just unreal for me to do. So it's been on my list for years. And I did a contract in Port Lincoln and I just did it on my day off. How crazy is that? And it is a, like a 12 hour day. So it's a humongous day. But I just was so mind blown about that experience that I got to have. And I also went during their Tuna Rama Festival. And that is actually like hilarious, like so, so funny. They have this big giant rubber tuna fish and they do a throwing competition. They've got to like, you know, spin around and throw it. And whoever does the one that's the furthest away is the winner and they get crowned. And it's like, yeah, it's it's so funny. But I actually, I entered um, my contract right at Tuna Rama. So that was, I did that on purpose as well. I looked at the dates. I was really strategic and I wanted to experience tuna rama and I wanted to experience shark cage diving. And then on the side, I hired a car on some days off because I did heaps of night shifts. So I got to have some days off and I drove all the way through the air peninsula, um, past Streaky Bay and I did, um, swimming with the sea lions and these sea lions are like crazy cute. They're so adorable. I actually have a video, I have video footage of a sea lion kissing me on the face, a wild one. And you know, and you probably won't believe this, but I made sure with my bucket list items, writing them down, I was really specific. So I didn't just write, I want to swim with sea lions. I actually wrote, get kissed by a sea lion. And I didn't want to like go to the zoo and get kissed or anything like that. I just wanted to make it a little bit extra special. So this was been on, this has been on my bucket list for like five years. And it says, get kissed by a sea lion. Exactly. And there I am with my iPhone. I've got a waterproof baggie over it. I'm taping me with the sea lions. And this guy was like, here, give me your phone. I'll tape you with the sea lion. And I was like, yes, please. Anyway, we're underwater. I'm like swimming. And this sea lion kisses me on the face in the video. And it is the most gorgeous thing ever. I just had his whiskers all over my face. It literally was a kiss. And I remember thinking, oh my God, that was actually on my bucket list. Like, I wasn't going to cross it off my bucket list because I was only swimming with sea lions, but then I got kissed by one. So I got to tick it off the list. So things like this happen. Like what I'm a big believer in what you put out there will come to you. So if you're putting out these amazing bucket list things, um, you will be really surprised what actually comes back hundred percent. So South Australia, definitely don't push it to the side. Okay. It is such a gorgeous place. You have to go. We have contracts on like Kangaroo Island, Port Lincoln, like the whole shabam. We've got contracts everywhere. So reach out to a consultant and just apply because it's such a good spot. But you've also got down um, Tasmania. Tasmania is just the wilderness in Tasmania and the, the wildlife and the greenery. And it's just the food. And it's just, it's such a beautiful place. Like when I came back to Victoria after leaving Tassie I was looking around just mind blowing like wh where are all like the wombats and like where are the echidnas and where are all the little patamelons and the wallabies like they're everywhere in Tasmania and it's so beautiful to see so much wildlife so Tasmania is really gorgeous for like hiking you can go to Cradle Mountain you can actually drive from the top of Tasmania to the bottom in about three and a half hours which to me was crazy like I was in Burnie for my contract which is the Northwest Regional Hospital um, highly recommend it. Amazing staff, amazing facility, like amazing. Honestly, I, I can't speak of it highly enough, but I do recommend bringing a car. If you do have the ability, you can put your car on the ferry and then bring it over to Tasmania, especially if you're doing like a six plus week contract. I totally recommend that. Like, honestly, I drove from Proserpine to Tasmania to just have my car. So <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Um, but yeah, that location itself is amazing. And, you know, you can go to Cr yeah, Cradle Mountain is also a bucket list thing, right? Seeing a wild echidna, seeing a wild wombat was incredible. I went to Port Arthur and I did the tour. I'm writing, oh, Mona Museum. 
and Salamanca Market in Hobart. Like, so cool. Um, the Mona Museum was a museum of, oh my goodness, I actually forgot what it was called now. It was very, um, very R18 plus. I wasn't expecting that. So I went on my own and I was like, whoa, what am I looking at right now? Um, there was even like this area um, that was replicating your digestive system and <laughs> it was so weird. They actually had poop times and you would go and you would watch these like, I don't know, machines poop. And it was such a stinky area. And so I remember going and I was like, do I come back to watch the poop show? Because it sounds so interesting, but I never end up looking at the poop show, but I got photos of the intestines and it was just weird. Like art to me is very unusual and very strange, but I'm into it. So yeah, going to Mona is like, yeah, next level. It's so fun. And, you know, I went to the Gorge and Launceston. Like I did so much. I did wine tours. Like I went on a wine tour on my own like a, as part of like a tour group and I met some awesome people. Um, we'll move across to New South Wales now. So New South Wales, we mainly do New South Wales health contracts and it's agency organize it, Healthcare Australia organize it, but New South Wales health pay you and they also organize your accommodation for most cases. So it can be a little bit confusing because every state is different, right? So that's the only thing that kind of deters people, I guess, from going to New South Wales to do contracts because the income isn't as high. Um, and I'd rather go, I don't know, chase the coin. But as I said before, I am not someone who chases the coin. I am somebody who chases experiences because at the end of the day, we're still getting paid great money. We are, honestly, we are. So I have chosen a, quite a few contracts around um, New South Wales. I've had a ball at every single one of them. I was recently just in Ballina, New South Wales, which is like 30 minutes down from Byron Bay and like kind of near Lismore area. It is such a gorgeous town and the hospital itself is just so, I mean, it needs to expand because the population is 100% growing. So they definitely have so much growth, like so much growth ahead of them. But the actual hospital itself is beautiful and the people that I worked with were so great. But on my days off, I got to go for beautiful beach walks. Like Chris Hemsworth was in the town when I was there. That was wild. Um, there are beautiful dolphins constantly in the water that you can see and you can see whales. You can actually see whales from the beach. So you can have breakfast at the beach and see whales jumping out and splashing and just like, it is so crazy to see. So I actually did a whale watching tour, um, and you go out on the boat and you go all the way, well, you actually don't go too far out to be honest, cause they're just everywhere. And you, they put a microphone in the water so you can actually hear the whales, um, we had some baby whales. They actually go onto their side and kind of use their hand as like a flipper. It looks like they're waving to you. Um, yeah, they go out and they show like how strong they are and they go and they splash. It's just, it is so beautiful to see those mammals like up front. Gosh, I hope they're a mammal because I've just said that. I'm not really good at uh, animals, so we'll just see. But they are just beautiful, beautiful creatures and they're so ginormous. But you know, I would never be able to experience that stuff at all. Like I'm a Brisbane girl at the moment and I mean, I don't know where to go while watching. It's just not really a thing that I get exposed to. So I was so blessed that, you know, Ballina had that opportunity for me to do that. Um, what else have we got? I've written New South Wales, Byron Bay. I mean, obviously everyone wants to go to Byron Bay. It's so cool. It was half an hour from Ballina. I went there a few times. You can climb Sydney Harbour Bridge. Um, you can get <laughs> in Coffs Harbour. There's like this giant big banana photo. Because what I do, okay, I know this might not be a bucket list item for you to get a photo of a big banana, but whatever location you're at, like whatever location you're doing your contract at, just write a bucket list of your location. So when I was in Griffith, New South Wales, I would write a whole bucket list of items that I wanted to do around that region. Like I was like, hey, while I'm in Griffith, I'm going to go to Yar Yarran Winery. I'm going to go to Debortley Winery. I'm going to do a hike at Kirkapara National Park. I'm going to do a day trip to Leeton and go to Narandra. I'm going to like go to Wagga. Like when you do all these things, you get to explore the entire region and it's so fun. And that's exactly what you can do. So New South Wales is awesome. And then Queensland. I mean, Queensland's great as well. So the only place I kind of missed was ACT. I mean, they're so tiny. There's lots to do in ACT. But we do have contracts there, but obviously not as many because it's quite a small location. But if you desire to go to ACT, then yes, we have contracts there. So I hope this podcast inspires you a little bit because 
you know, whatever it is that you want to achieve in your life, whether you want to be a complete nomad, um, no home base and just do the travel nursing midwifery lifestyle and then just adventure and go on holidays in between contracts, you can do that. Um, if you just want to have a once adventure, you know, just get away for a couple of weeks, you can do that. If you want to do two contracts a year, you can do that. Now, you also can do metro nursing and you get to do this in the same umbrella with HCA, right? So this is the best, like the most amazing part about being with HCA is that you can be with our r and team, but you can also join our metro team and you're in the same umbrella and you're still with HCA, you're still with Team Purple and you can do day-to-day shifts. So for example, I'm from Perth, I've done day-to-day shifts there. The day-to-day shifts means that you have an app on your phone and you have availability and you just tick and cross from Monday to Friday, AM, PM, night duty, and you just tick and cross what you're available for. And then the operation teams will see it. They'll send you an alert and say, hey, would you like this shift at this hospital at this time? And you confirm it or you deny it. But, and then that's what happens. And yes, you can be cancelled before the shift, two hours prior. So it's a 7 a.m. shift. You got two hours before, so 5 a.m. But I mean, 5 a.m. is usually the time you get up anyway, 5 or 5.30, right? To get ready for work. So, you know, if I haven't had the phone call, then I know that it's fine. But if they have, a, I do get a phone call and it gets cancelled. If I want to work somewhere else and I'm keen, Um, then I have the ability to say, no, can you try and find me something else? And they'll do their best to find you something. Or I can swap to a PM if that's easier. So you have to be flexible in that kind of part of it. But the pros are obviously the money is amazing. And the flexibility is so good as well. So there's Metro. So I was in Perth doing Metro. When you do R&R contracts, it's full-time. So you get full-time income. And then I stopped in Townsville because I had some family stuff go down. And I just called HCA, never worked in Queensland. And I just said, hey, I'm in Townsville at the moment, really want to get some work. And within a couple of days, they had like a full contract for me. So you can do day-to-day shifts um, and just tell them what your specialty is. You just apply. But sometimes if a facility is really desperate for staff and you are willing to do full-time, you can get something called block bookings. So you can get like a one month, two months, three months, full-time roster and you're with that placement. Like it's kind of like a, yeah, placement. So you have those options as well. So I was really wanting full-time work. So that worked really well for me. So I was quite mind blowing when, you know, I started in Perth in Metro and then I came and did R&R and then to just make one phone call and say, hey, I'm in Townsville. Can I please get activated? And then I had so much work was so awesome. And when that block booking contract finished and I went back to -to day-to-day shifts, like, I was doing a mixture of, you know, emergency and the ward and, you know, and theater recovery. Like I was able to do so many different types of shifts um, depending on my specialty because that's what I do. So I was super grateful. Um, I even went to Newcastle and I got to, I just called up the team and they were just like, yeah, we'll activate you. And I was actually on a break because I'd finished a contract and I had a two week break and I thought, oh, maybe I'll do a couple of shifts while I'm just hanging out in Newcastle. And every single like availability that I put down, they um, (laughs) booked me in for shifts and I was a bit, I was overwhelmed. I was like, oh my God, there is so much work here. Like, I didn't realize. So, you know, literally wherever you are, if you're just like randomly, I don't know, in Wollongong or whatever, just call the team and say, hey, this is me. Um, this is my skill set. Like, what do you got for me? And they'll hook you up. I mean, their job is to get you work, right? So if you're flexible and adaptable and you're a hard worker and you're keen, 100%, they'll find something for you. But, you know, my biggest advice is like being with HCA is so good because you can be with r and you can be with HCA Metro. And if you've got all your references and you've got all your compliance stuff sorted and all that jazz, it makes life so much easier. But I guess when people, you know, can do different agencies at the same time and they can do like this one and this one and this one, I don't know how you guys deal with it all. And it gets very, very confusing, but it's easier for us to float you if we have your whole work history, if we know exactly where you've been, we know references, we know your statement of service, like we know that you're a good nurse and we know heaps about you, then when we float you to places, it strengthens their application for you. But if you work for us, then you don't work for us for a year and then you come back, like we do have to ask for references and things like that because we want to float good quality staff and we need evidence of that. So because I've been with HCA for six years, um, I made my, you know, my, my CV was strong. My references were strong. Um, all my compliance was up to date. And because I just worked with just HCA, um, I was so well known that like when I would go to a facility, I would get 
that job because I was so well known and I just got it. So yeah, just make sure to always, if you, if you want to dive into this as a, as a full-time thing, for example, just really make sure that your references are up to date. And I know it's a pain sometimes having to get references every couple of months, but it makes your application so strong. So that way you get all the jobs that you want. So this was just like a little rundown and I hope it inspires you because yeah, whatever is going on in your life right now, as I said, you can do it full time, you can do it casually, whatever it is, but there is a way that you can fully design your life with agency. Okay. So if you ever want to chat, um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook for the Healthcare Australia pages, and I actually run all the social media behind, you know, behind the scenes. So I'm usually the one replying to you, otherwise someone in marketing. Um, but just say, hey, Jess, if you want it to be specifically directed to me. But then I also have my Jess Tully Facebook page, so you can talk to me directly um, and I can chat to you when I'm free. So yeah, I'm always happy to have a chat, always happy to answer questions. Um, you know, I'm somebody who is a nurse with HCA, like I'm not I'm not just a person who creates social media, like I'm actually still working all the time as a nurse. I work two days a week currently at the moment in the Metro team, plus I do three days a week as an ambassador um, and I still do three contracts a year. So you know, this is something that I'm super passionate about and I'm still continuing my bucket list journey and it's actually always changing. Like, you know, you're allowed to chop and change your bucket list because it's your bucket list. Do what you want. But um, yeah, my bucket list is pretty amazing. I've ticked off so many things and I tell you what, I'm the happiest I've ever been. So hope this inspires you and yeah, just drop a line if you ever want to have a chat. All right, guys. Bye.